Hi everybody, I thought I'd um, just respond to the questions about symbols um, for those who are interested. Um, if you, uh, well the question was in uh, one of these things about the little symbol with the open to closed, which is about further brass covered by the hand, open to closed uh, and vice versa. Uh, so uh, someone mentioned they'd been using a symbol for this and a symbol for this and a line in between and that is indeed absolutely fine, perfectly okay way of doing it. You obviously probably need to muck around with magnetic layout a little bit. I just wanted to show you uh, how to make the symbol because someone said um, that they knew you could do it but they didn't know how. Um, so if I go to notations and rather than clicking on the symbols uh, drop down I'm going to click on the little uh, extra dialog box there. Um, and I'm going to start off a new symbol with the new button and I'm going to call it open to closed um, and I'm then going to um, uh, go and find my open symbol which I think we're all sort of fairly agreed is this one um, and I'm then going to position it using this little arrow to the left of the red X which represents the space above or below the center of the note to which it is attached because it's attached to a staff. Um, that's important um, in terms of if you want to have it um, actually a shortcut on the keypad so it just automatically appears. Uh, and of course whether it's above or below will go in engraving rules. All right, so I've done that one. I can now add another symbol um, by clicking the little add button there, and I can use this little hyphen here. It's maybe a little bit thick. I could muck around and try and find something better, um, but I will just do that. Line that up by I, and then click add again. And when I was just testing this out before, uh, I found that most of the dots, like this stopped string dot, and there is a uh, staccato dot and there is a rhythm dot are all a little bit um, small so whether or not you stick with a Hearn's example which definitely has you see open is much bigger than small or whether you decide that maybe that's not so legible and you can't find a dot and you prefer something about the same size which I found I can't remember where I found where did I find a circle that was, it wasn't note heads, it wasn't notes. That's kind of looking quite similar now, isn't it? But although that looks smaller too. So actually maybe I maybe I just found something even better. Uh, yeah, maybe I did. Okay, so then let's just see what that looks like. Oh no, that is the one that I found. Yeah, so that's the same size. So I don't know, to me, open and closed don't need to be bigger and smaller, but um, obviously you should also be checking out uh, what um, it says in behind bars and making a decision whether you want to ahernize it or whether there's something more closed. Would you be, for instance, using a plus for closed? Um, but in this case, I'm just really showing you trying to get as close to the, um, the ahern example as possible. So I mentioned that this um, circle is a bit small. I don't really like it. But we'll just do that for now because it's as close to the Ahern as we can get. Okay, so we've now got a, a symbol called open to closed. Click OK and right down at the bottom uh, in user defined in the symbols that's there. So I'll just show you um, putting that on some notes. So let's just, whoops, let's just highlight those notes and Z for symbols and it'll be all the way down at the bottom. My user defined menu open to closed. And so there it is. Yeah, you can see again the little uh, closed dot is a little bit crappy. So you could muck around anyway, um, playing around with all of the various other things that are available. You don't have to use music fonts, so we can go and edit this. Um, we can remove that staccato symbol. We can go and look for um, uh, different things. Um, but anyway, yes, I might just go and do it with that open with the uh, the larger circle since I quite like the way that that looked work looked when I was um, mucking around with this before I made this video. So okay, now I've got a new version of that graphic, uh, and you can see it's immediately updated in the score here. So at the moment, that's a symbol that can just be dragged around and put anywhere. 
But the other thing that someone mentioned, and I mentioned in one of our lectures, is that you can actually, uh, if you go to the articulations um, keypad layout, which is the fourth keypad layout down here, these three custom articulation spaces can be uh, used to make uh, custom articulations. So one that I always used to do was a hanging tie or lace vibre because uh, you get a lot of those in, in orchestral music. So I would have that programmed for here. Now this is a little bit fiddly. Uh, so again, I'm not suggesting that you ought to do this, but I'm just showing you how to do it in case it interests you and in case you decide, well, I've got so many bespoke symbols that that would save me a few hours. So uh, in which case you would want to do this. So uh, what I do is I, I, again, I've gone back to the uh, symbols dialog and uh, I've scrolled down to articulation and you can see that these two boxes are empty, these two boxes are empty and these two boxes are empty. So, sorry, these two boxes are empty. So each of these show you uh, correspond to these three boxes here on the keypad, although they won't actually update, which would be nice if they did, but they don't. So when you click on, uh, so when you click on here, you want to make sure that you don't click new this time. You click edit, and uh, you might think, oh, you've got to go make that whole um, symbol again, but you don't because it's already in our user-defined menu. In fact, there's two of them, and I'm going to click OK, and uh, there it appears. So all three of those original combined symbols are now all as one. Now I'm going to leave it in its def default position, but that default position will be a bit rubbish. Uh, you'll see how and why we'll fix that later on. Uh, so I'm going to click OK and I'm going to click Close. So as mentioned, it doesn't update on here. It still just looks like an empty box. Let's delete that original symbol. I've highlighted those notes, and but now when I click on the box here, uh, that turns that symbol on. Now, um, generally, the positions will be a little bit rubbish. Uh, they'll be directly above or below the note head depending on uh, its position. Uh, and you can see that they're not very well centered. Uh, we'll go into that in a second. Uh, if I go into engraving rules and I click uh, here, now you can see that because this is in my articulation tab, under articulation and engraving rules, I can actually make rules about my new symbol. So I can say it's always above, uh, no, I don't want it allowed in the scar. It's allowed inside the middle of a slur. It's, uh, it's allowed inside a tuplet. Yes, all of those things. Click OK, and they should all go above now. So I don't know exactly how Ahern writes them, but you could do that automatically. Um, the other thing that you'll want to get right is the positioning. So again, going back to symbols, and this does tend to have to be done a bit by eye, you'll notice that before when I added one to just this box, it got mirrored here. And that's because this is for above, uh, the note and this is for below the note. So um, therefore if I click edit and I um, click on the open to close symbol, don't forget to click on that first, and then I relative to its position, I'm maybe even just trying to center it around the crosshair. It's sometimes a little bit hard to get this. You can type values into here if you're not getting exactly the kind of position that you want. So I might go 0.16 offset to the right. Um, and click OK, and immediately you could see those jump. And then I can go down here, and I can click Edit, and I can offset this one as well. It does at the moment seem to be affecting both of them, but I've probably done something wrong. But you can you can have a play around with this. Oh no, I know what's happening. Yes, because this one is an automatic mirror. What we want to do is actually say no. We want to edit that, and we want to. Um, get rid of that and we want to add our symbol again yeah rather than using an automated mirror because that way we'll get a different offset for um, up or down stems so that should again fix it okay so this is still a bit crap and needs a bit of work whoa and when I clicked on it those moved but yeah you can see so Sibelius is really majorly not behaving at the moment um, but uh, in theory you can see how it works and you know how to um, how to edit their position. Um, okay, so yeah, that's the video. That's how to make um, your own bespoke symbols from, um, from combinations of other symbols and other fonts, and also how to apply them to the articulations keypad layout.